So what do you do when the merchants are closed and your mum's boiler's not working and it needs a PCB? You fix it, right? You all right? I'm, uh, oh, I've just left some, uh, some training. My mum has messaged me to let me know that she's got no heating or hot water. So to go and see what's going on at her house. And we'll see how her boiler's installed. I'm sure it's still not right. I haven't actually seen this boiler in a few years. I don't think it's been, well, I haven't serviced it, so it hasn't been serviced in a couple of years at least. Um, so yeah, let's go there and see what's going on with Mummy's boiler. All right, so I'm here, just got here. The pressure isn't particularly low. So my mum's boiler's in the loft. This is about three quarters of a bar. The filling loop is at the back of there, so I'll just move these plates and check it. Oh, it's screwdrivers, I didn't even know that. Okay. Let me just grab one of mine. Okay, so turn one on fully. That one's the harder one to turn. So I'll do that one fully on and then crack this one till the pressure starts to go up. I can hear the water going in. We'll come up here and look at it. If it was just low on pressure, it may restart. If it's gone F75, it will need a reset. If it's nothing to do with that, we'll find out when we get in the loft. All right, turn that one back off. Now, what I was hoping to see there was a little, that pressure gauge moving a little bit as if the pump was starting to cut in, but it hasn't. So it looks like the boiler's probably not doing anything in the loft. So now obviously my mum texted me saying she's got no heating. So the first thing I asked her to do was run the hot tap, see if she had hot water. Obviously the uh, central heating is demanding and she didn't have any hot water. So there's a good shout there's either pressure or a problem with the boiler. So let's go upstairs and have a look. Okay. <clears throat> There's the boil up. <clears throat> oh, my bag's stuck, I can't get up. There's a light. Yeah, not very bright, is it? Oh, let me get my bag up here. Doesn't appear to be dripping. That's a good thing. Yeah, I'm in tracksuit bottoms and trainers. Just lucky I was in my work van, really. You can go there. Oh, cobwebs in my face. Let's have a look at this boiler, shall we? What do we reckon? Place your bets. <gasps> oh, F62. Funny enough, off the top of my head, I don't remember what that is. I'm pretty sure that's a PCB fault on these. F62. Right, I'm going to go out of the van and just get my thing so I can quickly read through it. This is a 837, and it, I think it's 2008, if I remember rightly. You can have a look there. Oh no, 2010, this one. I installed this in 2010. I thought there was water back there, but there isn't. Okay. I'll go get my fault finding chart, my fault, you know, the thing I made myself. F62, pretty sure that's a PCB issue. I've been out of the domestic game a little bit. I'm a bit rusty on it, but let's go get that and then we'll have another look. I'll be one sec. All right, so I looked it up in my book. F62 in my book, in my paperwork. Flame detection, full flame present for more than five seconds after birth. I can tell you now, nine times out of ten, that's the PCB. Um, I can't remember what F62 means, but I remember if you get that description, nine times out of ten, it's PCB. So I'm going to open it up, visually check it, then I'm going to reset. Oh, look. I mean, that's when I last serviced it. So, thought, boy, seven years ago. Jeez, seven years ago is the last time I serviced this boiler. Oh, diverter valve, 2020. So that would be the last time I actually worked on this boiler. 2020, it got diverter valve, that's four years ago. 
nothing obvious in there. Reset it. And let's see what it does. 23 degrees, should get demand. If the fan runs and this temperature messes about, that's a good indication that the, here we go, pump running, that's fine that the temperature changes there. If it changes when that fan runs, it's a good indication the low voltage side's messed up. So let's listen for the fan. Oh, look, 67 it went up to, 55, yeah? 25, 26, the low voltage side of the PCB is messing up. We're at 33 degrees, 34, but you saw that jump to 67. That's as soon as that fan got power, it dragged the low voltage side of the circuit board low, which caused the temperature sensors to read wrong, which caused the display to change. So they're saying this is at 40 degrees already. It may be, it may be. There you go, you see that jumping around there, 55 degrees, 49, it can't do that. It can't change six degrees in a half a second. 51, 60, you see that? So low voltage side of this PCB has failed. It is, it's too late to collect a PCB tonight. All right, I'm gonna do something here that I shouldn't do, and I am gonna fix this PCB for my mum. It's my mum's house, not a customer's house. Because I know it's just going to pack up again in, you know, 10 minutes. And she can't come up here and reset it. Let me go and get some bits. Let me check if I've got the bits in the van to fix it. If I have, it's going to get fixed now. So I've tried this 10 or 12 times now. And I think their intermittent fault is now dealt with. So what was happening, they would get on this heater here, which should be on auto, they, this light would, ev not every time, but every now and then, once every say three or four ignition attempts, that would come on. And obviously that sets the fault in the BMS, which they would pick up on their computer system every day. But it looks like we got it sussed. So them wires come in here, I'm in there, in amongst that cluster. But yeah, we are sorted. Right, okay, I'm just gonna show you this. So this water heater here, the problem is it keeps flagging a fault with this water heater on the, uh, on the BMS system. So uh, I've proved the BMS system works and that if, if the alarm wires are uh, effectively linked out it puts a fault on so I know that it does that at the BMS panel end which is about 10 meters over there so I've disconnected it here I'm now going to run this I've got this set to continuity so if this thing beeps at any point that's when it's setting the fault over the other side so I'm going to turn it on now Turn the temperature up and we'll see if at any point it beeps. So there you go, see that? Just done it, didn't it? Did you see that for a split second? That time it worked straight away, didn't it? No problems that time. Let's get it all to stop. Give it a minute and let's see if we get that to do the same thing again. Done it again. Lit, but it done it again. So that's our problem. That's the intermittent problem we're getting. Okay, so what I've worked out is, falling over it. What I've worked out is, this fault relay board 
always has power when the, as soon as this as soon as this spoiler gets power to run that has power on it and there's a little timer there look So that timer is activated the moment it gets power, and until it lights, once it lights, the other relay there, the big brown one, that gets power, and that then stops sending power to that one. So if the timer expires before it lights and fires that relay, it puts a fault up, but it's only putting a fault up for a split second. So I've adjusted this slightly. I'm gonna see what happens if it's fixed now. I may have adjusted it the wrong way, but we'll see. So basically this board, the moment the boiler gets a switch live and told to run from the thermostat, this board has power on it. This little adjustable timer here starts counting down. And if the boiler hasn't managed to light between the thermostat telling it to light and this timer expiring, it flicks over this relay which then puts a fault on the BMS. If, however, the boiler does light, the other brown relay which sits next to it here that energizes and cuts power to this all right so that's how this works a little bit of a strange one but that's how it works all right so let's try that again that worked perfectly So, as soon as I turn this on, you're gonna see this 240 on that one, on the fluke. So that is the fault board getting power to put a fault out on these probes here, which will cause that to beep. But the timer on the board is what's holding it off and stopping it putting a fault out. So until that goes green, that has power and if the timer counts down it will send power to that we've got green power's gone perfect now it's just dawned on me why hasn't this got a heating demand right now we checked downstairs and it had demand didn't it check this shall we so we should have 240 on four and if we have it should have a heating demand on it <sighs> mate there ain't no one else out here giving you this live boiler repair experience. I'm just saying, there ain't no one doing this the, up, the way I am. Ooh, there's our neutral and our switch live back to the boiler, yeah? Only got four volts. Have we got power going out? 240 coming out. Well, when we were downstairs, it definitely had demand on it, didn't it? Definitely. So let's see, the external controls are now not demanding. I'm going to do that and I'm going to show you quickly how you can prove this fault as well, okay? Let me get demand downstairs. This needs to go on DC voltage for the next test. And then what you find is, I've done this before, I've showed this before, the low voltage side of this PCB, which is controlled by the switch mode power supply, which switch mode power supply on this PCB is, I'll show you now, is that little transformer there. So the way that transformer, let's uh, turn this round. All right, so let me turn this round as well, so it's on me. Hopefully I don't look too spooky. Right, so the way switch mode power supplies work is instead of like on your site transformer, your big 110 volt yellow transformer, the reason they're so big and heavy is they are just a normal, we're gonna call that a normal transformer, okay? It just has two coils and it steps the voltage down. As simple as that. One coil was a lot longer than the other coil. It steps the voltage down. That's how them transformers work. The way a switch mode power supply works, so it uses switching the voltage on and off really quickly. So on, on one of them yellow transformers, it just works at the normal voltage coming in from the mains, which is 55 hertz. Whereas with a switch mode power supply, the switch mode bit works at 10,000 switches per second. It's, it, I don't know what it actually is. Electric, or electrician, electronics engineer will know that. But basically, that's how that transformer there can be that small. 
and still control all the electronics on this boiler. I can't see anything wrong with the caps on this, but more than likely it'll be one of the caps is at fault. And I can't even tell you which one, but there's one there, that little blue one there, and there's the big blue one there. There's another little blue one next to it there, and then there's two black ones there. Um, I don't think there's anything else on this to be concerned about, but basically, if you look at this PCB, you can see the low voltage and high voltage. High voltage, the line that divides them goes through this transformer. High voltage, low voltage. Hope you get that. Okay, so there's 240 volt side of the PCB, all these big traces, lots of space around stuff on that board. And then there's the low voltage DC side, which everything's much more compact and closer together. The transformer here, that straddled both sides of it. All right, so the transformer, you can see one side of that transformer, the right hand side there is in amongst the big traces and spaced out stuff. And the other side of it is on the DC side, low voltage, lots of very tiny little components. Um, let's go get my mum's external stuff calling for heat. And, uh, and then I'll show you how to use that multimeter to prove this problem. All right, so they weren't actually on, look. I said they were on, but they actually weren't. Put that on, wait for the click from over there. I heard the boiler make some noise. So like a numpty higher. I assumed it was on, and when I checked in the cupboard, I thought it was on, but it was just a status light. So, the boiler's making noise. I'm going to show you on here without getting electrocuted hopefully let's go seven and nine see what we got there quickly before the fan runs 20 volt okay when that fan runs let's see what happens to that voltage see it drops 15 17 okay shouldn't do that Shouldn't do that, that should stay solid, that voltage. The fact that that voltage dropped is because this is not being able to put out the right amount of amperage that it should. Now usually, not always, but usually that's down to the capacitors failing and causing that to not get the right frequency on it, which I believe it's frequency. Someone who knows about electronics may be able to explain better, but I'm gonna call it a capacitor failing causes the switch mode power supply not to work again let me show you that again so you've all got it cemented in your mind solidified because this problem here of the switch mode power supply not giving out enough voltage is common across many boilers so I've got my hand on I'm going to reset it okay and then we're going to put this back on without touching anything we shouldn't okay 20 volt 19 volt when it's moving the diverter pumps running diverter still 20 volt as soon as that fan runs 16 17 shouldn't do that should that should remain solid Alright, that's how you know it's a PCB issue. Generally, if it was a fan issue, you all know you get the F32. And generally, F32 is a fan issue. Can occasionally be a board issue, but generally, fan issue. So, here's my options I risk it, or I try and. Oh, there you go, look, it's doing it again jumping all over the place as that fan ramps up as well it pulls the voltage lower there you go jumping all over the place 55 41 can't do that you can't get 14 degree jump in temperature like that it doesn't work that's that physics the physics of this doesn't allow that okay can't do that And now this for me is like a real catch-22 because I could leave this 
and hope it's going to work tonight which I doubt or I can try and fix this for my mum and may break it completely but what can you do all right so I just got the stuff out of the van it looks like I do have it I've just got to check the pot but it looks right and I've come back and as you can see the display is lit up another classic sign of PCB failure the reason it lights the display up is because it when the voltage drops down it thinks you're turning the knobs so it starts to display the temperature you've set the knobs to and that again is the same thing the voltage drops and because it gets a different voltage coming back from the knobs it thinks you've touched them so uh, this job here is this is a site we're doing we're installing 40 magna cleans and uh, checking out there's lots of issues here it's been the individual premises have been neglected for many years so every property we go and we do a full sort of health checkup of all the actuators valves two ports uh, and all the controls so an engineer has fitted a new pump in this flat i believe but there was a problem he, he's a new engineer to repair never done it so he fitted the pump there was still an issue he wasn't sure what to do so I'm going to have a quick check of it, make sure everything's okay and find out what's wrong. This video is to help him. Um, so while it helps him as a new engineer into the repair sort of side of the industry, this will also help some of you guys get to this flat and we'll find out what's going on. Okay, so here we are. The heating is on. Broker has no display. Oh. Pump, which is new, we fitted that is running. We've got one valve open, one valve closed. So what I think may have happened here is this linked out in the back of this. I don't know. We're going to find that out now. Um, no, because look, that's on max. On max, you can hear the click, and it's not opening that valve. So the hot water can't be linked behind here. Otherwise, it should be open that valve if everything's working. So let's uh, turn this off here. Here, the pump stop. And we'll open up here and see what's going on back here. And then we will just link some stuff out to get these valves moving, make sure they do their job. If they do their job, it does only just need a programmer. So let's go in here and see how we're going to do this. Getting in here now. there we go there's a link for the heating to keep the heating on so that explains why that valve is on between live and four four obviously being if you look four central heating on okay three hot water on so now we're going to put a link between live and three make sure this valve moves up here and uh, I don't know why this doesn't focus anymore as long as that valve moves, obviously the one that's closed, which is this one here, as long as that valve moves to that position like that, uh, and we know the valves work and the pump should run. So I'm going to remove the link from heating, put it into hot water, make this valve work, and make that valve closed. Close, make that valve close. Okay, so all I'm going to do is move this link here into here. So this link, all it's doing for you new guys, is doing what the program is meant to do internally. So let's do that. That stayed in there. Yeah, stayed in. It's good enough for uh, good enough for testing. You'd never leave it hanging out like that normally, okay? That's just testing. So what we should find, I turn this on, and then valves both start moving. Once they move, we should hear that pump kick in. They're not the fastest of valves, are they? But we should hear, now we're using our ears to listen for this pump. Perfect. So I can put this back to how it was, just to guarantee they get heat. And obviously the hot water is being done off the immersion. Oh, actually, hold on. Hold on, I haven't checked, they will turn off. Pump stopped. Valve's turning off. We want that valve off. This is an unvented cylinder. We need to have that valve off and we'll run it off the immersion for safety. So let that close. 
move that link across back to where it was and this just needs a programmer and these are a weird type of HIU uh, obviously they've got the meter there and a strainer here, two two ports and a pump, but they just use primary water. There's no heat exchanger in there anywhere. And they have a little PCB in here that controls the uh, the pump. And these valves are power on, power off, uh, but they always have power off. And it's only when they get power on from here that they move. So now, turn that off, get this back how it was and uh, and turn it all back on and it needs a program and I'll put the cover back on. Okay so just so you're aware this the, the wiring diagrams you see on the back of things always show you stuff in the position it will be in without any power okay so the switch is here if you look between live and hot water off that's the switch there and that's how it be in its normal position and when the programmer clicks on that switch will just move on that fulcrum point and hit there and join the live to hot water on okay same here this is how you read these diagrams that's the switch when the programmer internally decides it will switch that and join the live to four okay and then obviously the live to three and in then at rest position they're telling things it's off which we very we use uh, hot water off in a three port system don't really use central heating off very often here obviously you could use it for something like a hold off for an air conditioning system or something like that so when the heating's off will be the only point the aircon can come on. Uh, this square and square that means it's double insulated so in theory it doesn't actually need an earth in here although it shows an earth that is just a termination point for an earth it doesn't actually need an earth to protect people in this because this device is all plastic. Anyway let's get this back together. That's how it will be to run their heating for them while we uh, order a programmer. It's not that I have programmers but it has to be quoted unfortunately for this client. Alright so let's turn this back on. Still no display on this. Heating's coming on. When it makes contact inside it will turn that pump on. Well it doesn't. It, it t tells the relay up there to make and then that turns the pump on. I'm guessing these valves can't have 3 amp in rush to that pump coming in. 0.37 amp and then you know times that by up to 5 I believe. So that'd be one and a half, well it'd be more than one and a half amp in rush. There we go, it's on. Doesn't need to be on speed 3 considering we've only got three rads on micro ball down here. And obviously there's a the new magnet clean fitted. Alright so Power's off downstairs. Turn the knobs down. Thing you've got to be wary of on all PCBs is capacitors store charge. And that is a 400 volt capacitor, I think. Yep. 400 volt capacitor. The pins on that, if you touch them, they're going to hurt. And we'll get it fixed. Oh. So all my finger muscles wasted away since I've been doing commercial. It's them pins there that will zap you. Oh my god, I can't believe that. <laughs> I didn't have the camera rolling for all of that. Let's just say I've replaced them. Shall we see if it's fixed? Let's get up there and see, shall we? All right, so here it is. Everything looks good. Double check them solder joints. I should have checked that downstairs where the light was better. They all look good. Drop that back in, hopefully. It's been a while, people. It's been a while. I've got an Ecotech 2 board very recently, but. In a while for an Ecotech one. Right. And I'm not saying it's definitely fixed because well, I didn't do this one, but only time will tell. I don't know if you can see that multimeter. Can you? Okay. Let's go down and turn the power on. You can watch and see if it all goes bang. Hopefully it won't, eh? So, the power is on. Turn it on. Do 
volts. Now we've got 21 volts on there. Let's see what happens when it runs. The diverter moved. 21 volts still. Pumps running, 21 volts. What's going to happen when the fan runs? Is it going to drop to 16, 17 or is it going to be all right? Come on, boiler. Fan's running. It dropped a volt. Right, we've seen the voltage is pretty stable. I'm going to chimney sweep it. Twenty one volts. It's lit and running. Still twenty one. I think it's on chimney sweep. I can't see. Can't see right now with this one. Should be ramping up though. But that voltage is now stable. See how changing them caps sorted that out. Let's uh, take oh it's on it's on heating, so that's fine. Of course it's on heating. Here's to be pretty cushy, doesn't it? I'll shout down and get uh, my mother to run the hot tap. The old girl's getting up now. Let's see. Recognises demand. Fans running harder. Oh. Temperature's nice and stable. It's not jumping around, it's not going from 60 to 40, from 40 to 70. Temperature looks pretty damn good, doesn't it? The display, the backlight's gone off. You can't do this in a customer's house. Under the gas regs, you're not allowed to do it as far as I'm aware. This is not a customer's house, it's my mum's house. There's no financial reward or material reward for what I've done. I have simply fixed this for free for my mum. Okay, this is to make her get through the night. It's like minus two outside. Um, yeah, so I can't really show you everything I've done here, but it's done. I'm gonna safety check the boiler, make sure it's safe and, uh, and call it a night. Since I decided to take the board out, it's taken 50 minutes to fix the board and put it back in. That is in a loft, that is finding all the gear in the van. That's, you know, that's a lot of stuff that I haven't done in a while. It took a little while for me to A, find it, sit, you know, it was a bit of a pain getting it out of the van to be honest, but it's done. There's my mum's boiler up and running, running beautifully. Press I now, it should be 14. Yeah, I can't actually see because the light on my phone's blinded me now, but I think that's 14, yeah, it is 14. Oh, my eyes. The things I do for you lot. Um, so yeah, now the most important bit of this is to safety check it, and um, and remember to get rid of my phone number when I show you lovely people this on YouTube. All right. Workstation and hot water. I don't know if you can see how hot it is. Yeah, you can see the steam. Now you can see it. Oh, we're on at 80 degrees, 9.6. So we'll give it a little tweak down. Not bad, though, eh? Tweaks it down. I like to get 9 to 9.2 on this. Nice. Go give it a little gas ratey, and uh, we are done. So, flu's good. I've done a flu integrity, that's good. Combustion's good, do a gas rate, and uh, we'll call it done. I will say I've never had an Ecotech fail in FFD check in, I mean these come out what, 2004? 
I've never had one fail. So in 20 years, I've never had one fail. I'm sure they do, but I've never had it. All right, well, it, uh, it rated at 36 kilowatts, so it's a little bit more hot water. I'll knock it back to 50. So look at the heating. Pop the heating on. 65. Don't do this anymore. None of this exists. I'm still here, but I've got rid of the website and I don't do fixed price boiler repair. It's just not worth it because people take the mic and call you with 67 million faults and want it all fixed for a fixed price. That's not how the world works. Well, it's working. That's my mum's boilers all fixed and working. I now just got to drive to Dublin and get the ferry back to Liverpool and uh, and get home for training at EOGB tomorrow. So yeah, a bit of a long old day. But um, what can you do? When your mum calls, you've got to go and get stuff fixed, haven't you? And this is, this is a, uh, it's as simple as that really so I'll uh, I'll catch you all on the next one